Number 53, the wire carrying 400 amps to the motor of a commuter train feels an attractive force of four times 10 to the minus three newtons per meter due to a parallel wire carrying five amps to the headlight. Letter A, how far apart are the wires? All right, so let's say here is your, um, you know, wire carrying 400 amps of current. It says it feels an attractive force due to a parallel wire that's carrying five amps. Okay, so let's draw that. So this is now five amps. And by the way, uh, if you notice, they're traveling in the same direction, so we already know that uh, the force will be attractive. Also, it says it feels, uh, well, an attractive force, it means that they're, uh, well, that was kind of silly, right? Because that's what it says. What I meant to say was, we know that they will be traveling in the same direction uh, because the black wire here feels an attractive force towards the red. When currents are traveling in the same direction, they have attractive forces. Why is that the case? Check out number 50. So I know this force here is going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons per meter. All right. And uh, what we are asked to find is we are now asked to find this particular distance right between them. I'll call it, uh, I'll call it like R, okay, because that's really what it will be in a second. All right. So... Uh, why don't we start maybe writing down some stuff about, um, you know, this particular black wire that we know in terms of a formula. So remember, we're talking about a force on the wire. We're talking about current, right? Probably talking about a magnetic field possibly produced by the red wire acting on the black wire. So uh, let's write down the formula F is equal to, so the force acting on the black wire caused by the red wire is going to be equal to the current in the black wire, okay, the length of the black wire, the magnetic field, here's the key, the magnetic field, the external magnetic field acting on the black wire. Now the external magnetic field acting on the black wire is being produced by the red wire. We know that currents produce their own magnetic fields, okay? So therefore, I'm going to write a little sub R here then multiplied by the sine of the angle between that external magnetic field being produced by the red wire and the direction of the current of the black wire. Okay. So we are asked to find R. You don't see an R in this formula. What that means is that we're probably going to have to do a substitution somewhere. Now recall that this red current here, traveling in that red wire, produces its own magnetic field. You remember right-hand rule number two? Check out number 50 for a review. So when you point your finger to the right here, that represents the current, the uh, magnetic field that is being produced around this wire should look something like something like that, right? As you wrap your fingers around it, right? It's kind of rotating in that fashion where it's coming out of the page, okay? On top of that red wire, everywhere on top. So what you would do coming out of the page means that they are dots. So maybe put some Put a couple of dots all over the place above the red wire. Okay, should be coming out of the page. And then below the wire, right, they should be going into the page. So you put some X's below that red wire. Okay, so put some X's. Now I know, right, a, a lot of the, the stuff in this chapter is a little challenging here because you're like, wait a minute, well, doesn't the black wire also produce its own magnetic field? And yes, it does, but that does not affect itself, okay? The magnetic field that's produced around the black current now affects the red wire. It doesn't affect itself. So in other words, if I have to find the external magnetic field acting on the black wire, I must look to the other wire or wires in the problem in order to determine the strength of that magnetic field around the black wire. The reason being is because it is the external magnetic field around that black wire that is being produced by the red wire that is going to produce this force. All right. Now we have a formula here that talks about the strength of the magnetic field being produced by a current. That's the formula over here. It says that the strength of the magnetic field being produced by the red wire will equal the permeability of free space times then the current flowing through that red wire divided by two pi 
multiplied then by the radius right, of the red wire. You can think of this radius as just distance, meaning the distance away in either direction from that red wire, okay, X or X, whatever you want to call it. In this case, I called it R, and that's why I called it R, because that's what it is. So what I realize now is I can do a quick substitution, and I can just substitute, all right? So we now have the force on the black wire being produced by the red wire is equal to the current in the black, the uh, length of the black, Substitute that on in the permittivity of free, uh, excuse me, permeability of free space multiplied by the current of the red wire divided by then 2 pi times the uh, radius between them multiplied now by the sine of theta. Okay, so now if you notice, you know, consider that the black current here is pointing directly to the right and the red magnetic field lines that I have drawn are coming out of the page directly at you. They are at 90 degrees relative to one another. That's what the sine mean, that's what the theta represents, the angle between the magnetic field, the external magnetic field on the black wire, and the current. So sine of 90 is just one, so just cancel it. Okay. Now we basically have everything we need and we can start plugging in. There's one little trick though. They didn't give you the force, they gave you the force per meter. So all that means is that in this formula, one of those values, well actually technically two of them, have the value of meter. Now it turns out that we're going to then divide out the length of the black wire. And the reason being is because if I divide out the length of the black wire and I bring it on down just like that, what we realize now is we realize that what I just solved for is the force per meter on the black wire. In other words, the Newtons per meter. So they gave us this number, okay? Now we are asked to find R. So now it's just a whole bunch of algebra. Okay, so what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to kind of rearrange this thing. Let me erase this sign and all. So what I'm going to do is just do some swap a ruse, right? This I can just, it's all multiplication. So I just move stuff across that equal sign, right? Diagonally, essentially. So what I'm going to do here is uh, let's do this. So this is going to be now R will equal, all I got to do is move this to the other side. You can think of this in a couple of ways. You can flip the fraction if you want to just shove it into the denominator really doesn't matter. I'm going to just shove it into the denominator. Okay. This is the current here in the black. The, permit, uh, the permeability of free space is four pi times 10 to the minus seventh. All right. Actually, let me start plugging in some, well, I'll just plug that in. Uh, the current in the red, then that's all divided now by two pi. And then, like I said, I'm going to put my force per length down here, F per L. Okay. Now, if you notice, some things will start to cancel, and we're going to start plugging in some numbers since I'm running out of space. You know, well, technically the 4 the four goes to a 2, and the pi's go away, and the 2 goes away. Um, now I'm just going to start plugging in some numbers. So the current traveling in the black wire was 400, they told us. The current in the red was 5. And the force per length, they told us, was going to be uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 3. So all you got to do is now plug it on into the calculator. So it's going to be 400 times then 2 times 10 to the minus 7th times 5, all divided by now 4 times 10 to the minus 3. And we get a value of 0.1, right? So the radius here, the distance between them is 0.100, and that's in terms of meters. And that takes care of that. And then letter B, it says, what are the, are the currents in the same direction or not? Well, we kind of explain that. Well, I referenced you to a problem before, but really quick. Um, if the current here in the black wire is traveling, you're using right hand rule number one, thumb is pointing to the right, your fingers then, right, your fingers then must be, um, actually, well, yeah, current traveling to the right, okay, your thumb is pointing to the right, the magnetic field here, the external magnetic field is now coming out of the page, so you, it looks like your thumb is to the right and you got to be pointing yourself, poking yourself in the eye, and if you notice then your palm should be pointing now downward. And if it's pointing downward, what that tells me is that, yeah, well, the magnetic field is then out of the page here. And what that, what that then does tell me is that the current here is indeed pointing to the right because we already talked about how it was rotating. So it kind of helps to memorize it a little bit, but that's why it is. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care.